Now, there are many situations in which have a quite complex face space, or even if it's a maybe a simple face space, we have very high energy barriers between two minima. So let's say the easiest situation is where we have a very high barrier between two minima. If we want to do some kind of, for example, free energy estimates, or in general, we are interested in knowing the whole phase space and knowing all the minima, uh, we won't be able to do it with a normal molecular dynamics. Because if it's, this barrier is high enough or there are many minima, uh, once that we start, for example, with one of them, the probability to go through this barrier or through these many barriers we might have is almost zero. Because molecular dynamics runs, or also Monte Carlo runs, do only go on for a short amount of time in which this kind of rare events will not be observable. So there are all a set of methods that will resolve this problem and give you the possibility to go through. In this video we are going to talk about all the series of replica exchange methods, also called parallel tampering. They can be both used for molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo in exactly the same way. There are two types of replica exchange methods, temperature REM, so temperature replica exchange method, and Hamiltonian REM, so re Hamiltonian replica exchange method. But the basics behind them are exactly the same. Let's see them in the most general way as possible. We, in a replica exchange, we will have different replicas of the same system, starting with the same starting coordinates, with the same starting file. The fact is that these different replicas will be in different conditions. So they will explore a different ensemble, of, for example, with different temperatures in case of a temperature REM or different Hamiltonians in case of a Hamiltonian REM. The fact is that these replicas are made in a way that if we have our energy barrier, the higher one will pass it with no problem, will pass it continuously the a bit lower one will pass it quite often and so on so on till our target so what uh, with the ensemble that we actually would like to see how it behaves that will usually never ever pass this energy barrier and what we are doing is bringing on the the molecular dynamics or monte carlo run and periodically attempt a swap between the coordinates sometimes a swap could fail some kind it could sometimes it could su succeed and so slowly we will be able to explore the phase space because Because in the end, we will have gotten in the, our target, in our target replica, we will have gotten multiple times replicas that came from higher energies and that had the possibility to go through the maximums and through the barriers. In this way, we will be able to explore on our target replica all the minima and all the places we are interested in of the phase space thanks to the fact that the other replicas are able to go through these barriers and to explore phase space very efficiently. Now, the swap will be attempted in a metropolis fashion. So, that acceptance to going from M to N will be the minimum between 1 and the probability of the arrival state, so rho n divided the probability of the starting state, rho m, exactly as in Metropolis. It will depend on which ensemble we are studying, which kind of replica exchange we are doing, and also if we are doing a molecular dynamics or a Monte Carlo. So that's the idea behind it. The fact that, as said, in the very high energy we will continuously swap, and so on so. The fact is that we will, of course, always have to choose them in a way that we will have a good acceptance ratio. But of course, not a too high one, otherwise 
it will be all too low energy and we will not be able to explore the phase space efficiently. Which is the good acceptance ratio? As always, it's not an easy answer to, an easy question to answer, exactly as in the Monte Carlo algorithm. Um, because many will say 50%, but actually many will disagree with it. So you will have to decide. Then the interesting thing is that we can get the value of some kind of ensemble average or whatever we would like to calculate in our target replica, for, we will call it A, whatever we are going to measure, using the multi-state Bennett acceptance ratio, we'll be able to get it using all the replicas, using each replica, in something that we remember a weighted average. Now uh, the value of this M, so this weight factor, is the value of the weight factor of the Bennett acceptance ra ratio of the kind of replica exchange we are doing right now. Um, it's a quite complex formula, it wouldn't add much to this video, so I won't write it down, but you can find it for free in the ORAC Molecular Dynamics documentation. I will link it in the description. You will find it for the Hamiltonian Replica Exchange. Let's see the first kind of REM, so the TREM, the temperature REM. What, as the name I suggest, what we are changing from one replica to another is the temperature of the system, of the overall system. Because of course we know that by hiring the temperature it is easy to go through energy barriers and therefore to explore the whole phase space. The acceptance to going from N to M in this case therefore is the minimum between 1 and E minus beta N minus beta m and then the energy and the energy of the two configurations x and x first that we do have so this will be the difference uh, this will be the acceptance criterion and as you see it depends on the temperatures and on the energy of the configurations even though we might do molecular dynamics we are not going to consider the momenta in uh, temperature rem because what we are exchanging is only the positions. That's because as we want to have a certain temperature, we will have to restart all the velocities again each time a swap is successful. So, as said, in a replica exchange we will have all these replicas going and periodically we will attempt a swap with this probability and it might or might not be accepted and this will go on as long as we go with our simulation. And in this way we'll be able to explore the whole phase space or at least a good part of it and go through some problematic barriers. That's quite important for example in complex molecules as proteins. Because of course proteins have very 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 complex phase spaces and if for example we would like to know if how a ligand would like would behave inside a protein pocket the only way is using some kind of method that gives you the possibility to explore all the, the whole conformational space but the problem with temperature rem is that as we are heating up the whole system the acceptance ratio becomes very very small quite quickly. So we have, we'll have to keep replicas that have very very similar temperature. So if we want to do big temperature difference we will have to use a huge amount of replicas. And that's unfortunate. In fact, uh, good temperature difference The, uh, an optimal way to get delta temperatures is this easy formula where 
This is the heat capacity at constant volume of our system. But as I said, if you want to do big temperature differences, because we might have very big barriers, we need to use a huge amount of replicas. This is because we are heating up the whole system. That's where Hamiltonian replica exchange comes to help. So in the Hamiltonian replica exchange, instead of changing temperature, we do change the Hamiltonian of the system. If we did change the whole Hamiltonian, of course we will get a perfect equivalent of the temperature RAM. So what we do usually do is that we will have a Hamiltonian and we will divide it in. Okay, we will have our kinetic energy, but we don't we are not really interested about it, plus a series of con potential energy contributions. And these are the ones we are going to scale. In fact, in, a Hamil in the Hamiltonian replica exchange, we will have a series of scaling factors for which we will express the total potential energy as a linear combination of the various contribution of the potential energy. Therefore, we can scale in an arbitrary way any contribution we want, making it bigger or smaller. So therefore, we could simply only scale the torsional part of the Hamiltonian, but don't scale the vibrational or the bending part. In this way, we'll be able to explore the torsional degrees of freedom without having to heat up all the other degrees of freedom and therefore we will be able to use less replicas because we will have a bigger acceptance ratio because again the acceptance ratio in this case will be something like 1 and e a minus beta vn minus vm if we are going from m to n we only consider the potential energy because the kinetic energy will be the same if we change, if we simply change the potential energy by scaling it. The, we don't need to consider the kinetic energy and we can simply only subtract the two different parts of the potential energy. And actually, if we are scaling only one part, we we'll only have to do the subtraction of that specific part we scale it because it's the only part that has some kind of differences. So for the rest it's all very similar to all other replica exchange methods. Now the interesting part is that we are not forced to scale even only one contribution of the Hamiltonian globally. We can scale it locally. So the interesting thing is that if we have a huge system like again a protein and we are interested only in the binding pocket and in a ligand inside it, we want to explore that conformational space, for example, only torsional conformational space or torsional and bending, we are free, but only on that part, but don't hate, heat up all the rest of the system. In this way, we will be able to use even less replicas and still getting a good acceptance ratio. In this way, we'll be able to explore the, the phase space of the part of the system we're interested in, in a quite economical way. And the great thing is that we have no needing to have a, a priori knowledge of the system. We don't need to know any kind of reaction coordinate, any kind of weight factor, any kind of nothing. We simply have to try a series of scaling factors that do work and give us the right acceptance ratio we are interested in, heat the right part of the Hamiltonian and we are okay. So what we are doing is simply arbitrarily lowering the part of the Hamiltonian in which we are interested in or hiring it of course if you, if you have a reason to do it. In this way, in the hotter replicas, it will be easier to jump, but the rest of the system will be perfectly equivalent to the non-scaled one. So uh, this is the incredible power. Uh, th uh, 
So this is the Hamiltonian replica exchange. So as said, we will scale globally or locally one or more contributions of the potential energy to the Hamiltonian. We will scale it to make it lower or higher in order to explore the phase space of the system in exactly as we wanted using as little replicas as possible and without having to need without needing any true a priori knowledge of the system except for the knowledge of which parts we would like to heat. That said, it's very interesting when you're studying proteins and you're interested in knowing the conform the behavior of a ligand inside the binding, binding pocket because that's a very rugged and complex phase space with a lot of barriers that can be also high some of them can be quite high and with a normal molecular dynamics we will never be able to explore it completely and as the prote proteins are huge systems if we use it a non-local scaling the pro we would have the need to use a huge amount of replicas this method is sometimes also called solute tempering. But sometimes what they mean with solute tempering is that they do also scale the interactions between the hot and the cold part. So the scaled and the unscaled part. While in this situation you are not scaling it. And in this way you are able to use even less replicas. Because as long as you're interested only in the hot part, you don't want the interaction between the cold and the hot part to be scaled. There is no advantage in it because of course you would need more replicas but of course there may be can be some situations in which you would like to have this interaction scaled or some the molecular dynamics programs in which it's easier to implement it that way so th there are different names for similar or sometimes equal things so you have to pay attention to it i hope you enjoyed the video all the sources and the materials i used to do it are written in the description below and here is some more content for you but wait don't click on it yet first remember to leave a feedback in the comments section to let me know what you think about it like subscribe follow me on social media links in the description and if you would like to support the channel consider to donate on patreon again link in the description below see you next time i'm Maurice Karnbrock for the computational chemist